The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, host of the Tiger Technicians Hour, 877-927-6648. Love to hear from you. And um, also the author of the opening call, Daily Newsletter. And let me just show you something here based on the Chapman Wave technique. We had a little buy signal just recently at about 11.25 in the two-minute E-mini, and it went up to a peak D. However, we started that way earlier. We had a, a peak... A, a, a low that was formed around about 9.30 this morning. And since then, we've gone peak A, peak B, peak C, D, and even an E, flattening out here. But I think that a chunk of the move has already been done. And we've been expecting that leg C uh, in the Dow daily. And here we got 120-minute chart, leg D. And D is what you try to get to. That is the objective in the Chapman Wave methodology. And it's fabulous when you can go through the different time frames and uh, the one can lead to the, the, the shorter one can lead to the next one, which is the longer time frame, and then an even longer time frame. So now we should see some kind of a pullback here. Uh, Dow is up 136. Now we can go to the nitty gritties. Dow is up 136. Um, I'll get back to gold. The gold chart is shame, but I'll get back to that. And we've started leg C exactly the way we wanted it. We've been long since June the 3rd. We were short from the day before the top of 26,695 on the 23rd of April. And then we were covering on the way down. We switched to the long side, uh, a 200% longer position uh, on the 3rd of June. And I think the next day we were out of our short, completely out of our shorts and the remaining short. And then we've been long. We did take a little bit off. Uh, somewhere around the 26,000 something level. We're now at 26,923, still with the core position. And within that context, what I am looking at is that there's a chance that we go to that D, the other indices will be at EFs. And I think we conclude that. So that means we still have to make a peak C, meaning maybe Friday comes out with the, uh, the, uh, a jobs report and it scares the market for a moment and we get a pullback and then maybe Monday or Tuesday we just pop a little bit to the upside and then I'm thinking that maybe we start a little bit deeper consolidation than we had just recently uh, more like the four to six percent uh, pullback I'm not even sure just yet I don't want to get in front of that but I haven't got the signals yet other than to say you're in the Chapman wave uh, this is you see these trend lines in the daily chart daily in the on the left Weekly in the middle, um, monthly on the right, 120 minute chart, just pop up right here. There's our legs. Ooh. That's right, leg D in the um, in 120 minute chart. That was our objective. Let me show you something here. Look, uh, this is what I show my subscribers every day. I don't know if I can get to it. Anyway, I show my subscribers every day. We're discussing it, uh, what we're looking for, why we're looking for it, using the Chapman Wave methodology. And we were expecting a, a, a leg D in the 120-minute chart above 26,890. We've already got that because we went to 26,931. That's also above the left side high of uh, right here. That was the high of the uh, 21st of June. And uh, there was a, a Chapman Wave. Five to the downside, Chapman Wave five to the upside, Chapman Wave single leg down, start a new one. So this should be a Chapman Wave three in leg D. And the MACD strong stochastic is now 74%. Not strong enough. I want to see 80%. Here's the daily chart. So I discuss this every day. And what did I say today? Oh, do I have that? Let me just get it because we may as well do that. Uh, let's see. Do I have that right here? Yeah, here's a 120-minute chart. I'll show you what we were doing. There it is. Um, Dow 120 minutes at 26,796. I discussed what we're high and all that. And then I say at the end, um, today, if the Dow is plus 60s or more during my show at noon Eastern time to the pre-holiday shortened market close of 1 p.m. today, that will be very good action. Near-term support is at 28,750s. Should be good. Um, so the low today was only 26,632. So far, the high is 26,719. We've met all the criteria. And yes, the Chapman Wave cup formation. Today was the day to get to the Chapman Wave inside 
wedge, another technique that I use, um, resistance, target line. We hit this exactly, almost to the, to, the, to the bar. Let me show it to you in real time. Here it is. There it is. Left side, right side price, time match to the low of the 26,465 low. That was on the 27th of June. And bam, we started up. And now we've hit this, you see this, this green line right here? That's the Chapman Wave inside wedge, target resistance line. And this left side, right side price, time match uh, took you to this bar right here. So we hit it exactly. So uh, we're in leg D. I suspect we will go higher. Um, but at the same time, it's achieved almost everything that we wanted uh, beyond our wildest dreams in time. This is really a short period of time to get that. Okay, enough with that. Um, and that says over the coming week, 26,500 is going to be absolutely key support. If there's any break next week below that, it says, uh-oh, we're in for a deeper consolidation in time and maybe price. Okay, now let's go to the S&P. I'll just finish this off real quickly. S and is already in leg D. Very quick C to D. I'm always a little nervous about a quick C to D because it invariably uh, means that you're kind of accelerating in your up move, and now you're getting a little overbought. So we're going to be watching that. So the Castix at 84% good, not great, but very good, um, and the MACD is very strong. So that says that the weekly chart. There it is, leg E, with the MACD good and the stochastic at 85%, all very good. And this monthly chart, you know. Maybe Friday, I'll take time and we'll spend time talking about the monthly charts. In fact, let's do that. We'll take Friday to do the monthly charts. So I said that I would do a couple of things today. One is that I wanted to go to a question that I had uh, late yesterday. Uh, snap, what was the question? Uh, snap, snap, snap. Am I going to find that question? I hope so. Oh, no. Uh, oh, it came in nice and early this morning. It was nicely written up. Oh, come on, come on. Snap, I mean, in the meantime, as I'm looking for Snap, I'll start talking about it. Uh, Snap is trading at 14.63, uh, made a peak D, a very um, I interesting two buy modes to peak D over the last since uh, mid May, uh, where it was trading at 10, trading right now at 14.63, hit a high at around about 15. The 200 period moving average, I spoke about this the other day. Uh, is at 1517. What I'd said is, I suspect that with this 200 period moving average in the weekly chart, first time it's even got close for months. There's a, there's a, oh, in fact, let me see, maybe it's a year. Yeah, first time it's uh, since a year ago, more than a year ago, February of last year, it hit it in one big spike in the weekly chart on news driven spike to 2122. Uh, and that was it. And uh, it hasn't even been close. And now it's gotten there over the last three weeks. And that says that the 200 period moving average has become a magnet. And I drew this in the other day. I said, should we go above it and below it? And now, now the question is, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can find it here. It was really a, a very nicely written one. Uh, I'll find it. I'll find it. I will. I will. Uh, there it is. Um, hi, Basil. Have a great 4th of July. Same to you, Hector. Uh, can you please give your thoughts on Snap? In at six, nine, and again bought some today at 14.10. My whole position has been very fruitful. I see Snap making a run to the 21 area after earnings. I find it very interesting that Snap moved uh, their date, earnings date from the first week of August to July the 23rd. Could this be a clue to good earnings report? Thanks, Hector. Yes, 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 yes. I'll talk about it because this does look like a very good stock. I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so we are looking for Hector. We're looking at Snap. Uh, it's trading at 14.54, up uh, 54 cents. Oh, wait a minute, 14.65. 14.65, up uh, 56 cents. Very nice action. And so the question is, if a company wants to have uh, to, to announce their earnings in a sh in an earlier time frame than would normally be the one that's usually booked well, way ahead of time, is that a good sign? And the answer is, it's definitely not a bad sign because if it's bad news, they have to actually mention it even earlier than that. As soon as it comes up, they're supposed to say, oh, we got to. Mm -hmm. Okay, they haven't done that. So I'm looking at this and everything about it says that, yes, it could be pulling back and digesting uh, some pretty big gains. But at the same time, if anything, there should be an earnings surprise or some positive that they want to get out. That's number one. Number two is, I'm looking at the Chapman Wave automated uh, resistance and support levels in all the different time frames. The 10 minute has 1461 and 1481. It's trading right now at 1466. It's in the middle of that resistance. The 120 minute chart has 1462, back on that 1462 area, and it's fractionally over that. And then 1503. The daily has 1455 and then 1554, nicely higher. And the monthly, uh, the weekly has 1562. And the monthly doesn't have anything yet. So what I am looking at here is that only the very short term has support levels. So in a way, that says that the upside is kind of a magnet, and the downside will start to produce uh, support levels if there's a big turn down. So I like it. So that's on the, that's that's doing it on on the basis of my Chapman Wave automated um, notations. Now this is what I wanted to show you. There's a particular pattern. Some of you will be very familiar with this. I'm going to expand the uh, chart. And that is, well, look at that. You've got a series of lower highs and much lower lows. And it creates this kind of expanding wedge. Actually, it's not much more lower lows. It's just lower lows with a slightly accelerated downtrend. To me, this is a very, one of the patterns that I look at in the Chapman Wave methodology is the falling axe formations. In other words, on the left side here, I can draw a straight line. That'll be the, the handle of the axe, goes all the way up. And then you've got this down sloping, opening cone, uh, expanding cone with lower highs and much lower lows. 
And in this case, it says if there is a close above this high of the 1st of July at 1481, that's just another, say, uh, 15 cents higher. Uh, that means that there's a good chance you're going to go to the next high. Well, the next highs were the most recent recovery highs in the 1501-1502 area. So that makes this 1517-200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart really a target. So your big question is, Hector, is this, where do I think it's going to go? And my answer to you is at some point, I, I, I believe it'll be this summer, uh, over the next uh, two months or so, there should be a push in SNAP, especially if there's no bad earnings, no, no bad news coming out when they give their report out in, what, in another week or so, uh, two weeks. I'm looking at this and saying there's a really good chance that if it starts to trade in the 1680 to 1730 area, any week, it has to be a full week, but if it's trading there and on Friday it closes near uh, $17 or 1680 or maybe just 1720 anywhere in that area, that 200-period um, moving average in the, in the monthly chart of 20.16, so the 20 level will become within one point, which between 19 and 20 will become an upside target. So I love what I'm looking at, but in the shorter term, I do not want to see any bad news event take it below 1350. That's all I can say. And all of those prices I've mentioned are way above your entry point. And I love the fact that you scaled in, you had a plan. I do not want to in any way impede your plan. I think your plan is correct. We'll see if that works out, but those are the levels I'd be looking at. And then you want to see it close above the 200 period moving average, the orange line here in the thick orange line in the weekly chart, the middle chart. You want to see it get to this, this rectangle high that I drew around about 16, 16, 10. You want to see it get there, um, <clears throat> preferably in July. If it can do that in July, um, and if it does it next week, I don't think this is going to be an F. I believe I'll be calling this F slash B with an emphasis saying the way the MACD is looking, um, it's all very positive, and that's going to be a big deal. So congratulations, good move. Next question I had was um, when I look at CGC in the cannabis area, CGC is cannabis growth, medical marijuana, and it is trading at 82 cents. I thought I saw when I was at the gym, I thought I saw some bad news, or was it yesterday about CGC? Oh, wasn't it? Wasn't somebody uh, kicked out or something like that? I don't know if this is the canopy growth, whatever it is. Um, so it plunges, it opens at 38.55, it, it closes at about 40, opens today at 38.55, and the next thing you know, it's yeah, 40, 40.8095, 40, uh, having it 41.07. I love this action and reaction. But there's a lot of work to be done in this chart. I believe that canopy growth is stuck in a range, and the range could be between 45, 30 over the next two weeks, and with tremendous support that has to hold in the 36s to 3550 area. That to me would be a, a lot of these. Look at the MJ, which is the medical marijuana. We're out of this now. I just it's been frustrating. Uh, it's a 3182 um, alternate harvest ETF cannabis sector. There's the ETF for it. It's really been frustrating. In fact, it looks just like CGC. Look at this monthly chart. Look at that. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference, except one's been around longer than the other. <clears throat> so, yeah, this is a nice bounce, but it's a news-related bounce. I don't think it's an earnings-related bounce. Uh, cannabis, uh, money, uh, yeah, but maybe the, that money went to crypto. As you remember, I always talk about the relationship, the counterpoint relationship. So um, you've got GBTC, <clears throat> Bitcoin fund, Trading at 14.64, up 68 cents, up 4.76 percent. That's very good. Had a huge move from 3.66 to the 17s, drops to the 11s, and now to the 14s. Wow, this thing is really taking off. It's in in play, and that's really good. Yeah, that's right. The CEO was forced out. Um, <clears throat> so I just be a little careful. I do believe this is the sector for the coming six months, but it could be really choppy over the next. I'd even say maybe most of the summer it could be very choppy, up and down, sharply down, bad news, good news. But if you're looking at the very long term <clears throat> and you have the tenacity to hold through some pretty sharp pullbacks, I think you're going to look good. I just can't do that for subscribers now. 
I just don't want that risk sitting on my shoulder, that's all. Uh, we'll try to get it as it's turning if we can. Uh, next question I had was the steel stocks, SLX. Yes, I spoke about this the other day to subscribers. So we're just going to hold off. It's had a great move. SLX is the steel Van Eck Vector Steel ETF, trading at 38.85, down six cents. Went right to the 200 period moving average in the daily, pulls back uh, away from it. I just think it's consolidating, and I suspect steel is going to still, steel will still have a good, good rally at some point in 2019. And I suspect the 44s is trading at 40 right now, 40.29. I think the 44s is in the cards. That's the 200 period moving average in the monthly, but I think we might have to wait for it to get going. Dow's up 149, S&P's up 19. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I was asked about OSTK, which is overstock. Uh, overstock, uh, I guess it's like a Wayfair in a way, but it has uh, everything. So it's in a leg E. We looked at it the other day, and I said it's made a peak D. The technicals are still very strong. It should go a little higher. And the weekly chart is making a pattern that says how it closes this Friday is going to be very important. If it closes again nicely over the 14 period moving average of 13.19 and it's trading at 14.90 up 58 cents right now, that's going to be good. It had the Eiffel Tower um, A. Where is that? Let me just type it in here. This is that Eiffel Tower pattern, uppercase. Let me just always do it. I do it in, in a parentheses. There we go. Oh, I did it twice, huh? 
Yeah, so this is going to be very important because it's already completed to a lower low, this Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down pattern. And uh, go to the biggest one. We got 48. There we go. Look at that. And now it's about to start. Now it's starting its real move. So overstock looking very good in the short term. Daily looks fabulous. Weekly has improved a lot. Technicals, I'd like the stochastic not to be at 25%, probably 37% right now. So it's lagging a little bit. And there's a good start to the monthly chart with a second green candle, <clears throat> if it has if it has in July a green candle here. So this is good. Yes, I like it. Where would you add? I think I thought we discussed that. I think I said between 1220 and 1190. Uh, I don't think it got there. It just kind of missed it by 10. Wait, what was the low? Um, I'm not sure if you did add. Yeah, it went to 1220 was the low. So if you did add there, that's great. And if not, um, oh, the, where would you add? Hmm, now it's tough. Now I have to wait because next week I think I'm getting some kind of a, a pullback that is going to start to give us a, a, a buy signal in a lot of these stocks that have been absolutely hammered. I mean, this thing's gone from 90 down to the most recent low at 9, 90% uh, uh, correction. Wow, I think that uh, this is one to keep your eye on. So I think you now have to wait. I'm going to still say 12.20 to 11.80. That's where I'd look at it again to add to or to start a position. Okay, I've got a bunch of those things done. Um, here's one, uh, XMI. So the XMI, which is the, here we go, XMI is the major market index, needs to still make that leg cease lagging somewhat. The high was on the 21st of uh, 27, uh, 21st of June, 27.53.07. And so far today, the highest 27.44.70 has got a way to go. So, and that'll start leg D in the weekly chart. So, I like the fact that you've got a little bit of lag here in some of the key ind indices. New York Stock Exchange, wow, leg C. New York Stock Exchange, I, I have to tell you something. We, you hardly ever hear anybody talking about it. I know Larry talks about us old timers who've been around and used to look at these as really key indicators. It still is a key indicator, and it's actually accelerating way better than some of the others. Um, in that, look at that strong leg to a C, and then it carries through and goes to a leg D, uh, way above the high of May. Uh, I like this. Yep, this is looking good. New York Stock Exchange looking very good. And in fact, this looks more like a leg B in the in the weekly chart than a leg E. But it is a leg B in the monthly chart. Great leg B. Oh, no, this is a full-blooded blue B, blue beard, because the stochastic is 80%. Oh, I wait for them. I have to wait for the month to finish. So far, the stochastic is 80%, and the MACD is just about to cross positive, but the month is young, as I like to say. Okay, now let's go to a couple of things. Oh, I said that today I would go through a bunch of stuff. Let's just grab them as I see them. Let's go alphabetically. A, Agilent. Agilent Technology Spectroscopy. Uh, solutions, improved method, um, um, improved methods of, of uh, development here. Uh, it made an all-time high in the 83-ish area, pulls back to the 67s. Now trading at 76. I like this. This is a this is a, still a gray leg A to the weekly chart because I haven't got the technicals confirming. The price is fabulous, and it's a huge leg D. In the weekly chart, I talked about it for my subscribers back in December. As this is one that I'd like to look at. Of course, we didn't look at it because I did not put it on as a buy. I just put it on as a watch. And in the 62 area, scream to 82, pull back to 66, and now it's trading at 76. It still looks good. Um, question, isn't Overstock one with a cryptocurrency? I don't know. Don't know anything about it. Uh, Yes, uh, XMI is a very clean chart, and I like that. Dow's up 157 with 20 minutes to go. S&P's up 19. This is really fascinating. And let me just go to my two-minute chart or two- and five-minute chart. Yeah, this is, I don't know if it's recycled. There's still a leg F to the upside. Daily leg F, a weekly leg, sorry, weekly. Five-minute chart leg F. Daily is in leg D. Oh, this just fits the pattern so beautifully. Um, at 29.96, key support short term has been 29.94 and 29.92. Breaks into the 29.98s, and I said 
uh, both to subscribers and here in the DM and I showed that e-mini chart as I show every single morning at about 6.30 or 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Um, I, then I sent it off to my subscribers about uh, half an hour later, maybe more, uh, no, an hour and a half later, um, that the e-mini, let me just show you what I was looking at, ESU19, should go to a leg D today. And what's really important about this is the technicals are still quite strong. And also, it's getting close to some kind of a resistance area. But the stochastic is now at 85%. I like that. That is good action. Okay. Let's get back to the nitty gritties. The dollar. The dollar is trading up four ticks at 96.82. Considering what gold did, Gold ran to within two points of, of the other day's high four or five days ago and the 1442.90 high in the continuous contract. And now it is up 12. It's still up huge, but it was up huger. It was up at 1414.7. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It was up at 1441.0. And now it is at 1420. 20 points lower. Usually that's a huge move. But in gold lately, that hasn't been such a big move. Gold is acting very well. I like the way gold is acting. I think it's getting a little tired, but it is having a high level consolidation. If you look at the TLT, it broke out. And I'd say if we go to subscribers, if we go one penny above 133.51 in the TLT, the 20 year iShare Treasury bond ETF, I have to consider this a G slash C with the emphasis probably on a C. Man, can I, you know, you tell me when last we were going to all time highs in bonds and at the same time, all time highs in the stocks. Well, wait a minute. Look, right here in September of 2017, the TLT went to 129.57 and then it pulled back and then December. Uh, the week of the 29th, it went to 128.59. Um, hmm. And the Dow <coughs> made a high in January of 26,616 and then dropped to 23,300. So, in a sense, they're, they're not too far off in time, but you know, in this business, a day or a week, a miss could be hundreds and hundreds of points. I'll talk about it more when we get back. Basil Trapp and Tiger Traditions Hour, Dow's up 155. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So we're looking at Disney uh, almost at an all-time high. Uh, yeah, this is this is really incredible. So Disney movies, entertainment, theme parks, uh, all time, almost all, all time high. We're looking at Merck. What a diverse bunch! All the oldies are doing so well now. <clears throat> this is leg C in the weekly chart. <clears throat> Merck. <clears throat> Why is my voice doing that? <clears throat> so Merck trading all time high. Leg C in the monthly chart. On its way to do the left side, right side price time match. Let me just show you something here. Look at that. Just a beautiful uptrend. Oh, wait a minute. This is going back to, I forgot. This is going back to the high of um, November 2000 at 91.50. Plunges down to the um, 20 area. Whew. And then it, uh, that was uh, 2009. And now it's trading at 86.94. Five points away from the less than five points away from the all-time high. It should do that, and it should do that in left side, right side price time match before, before. I would say actually from the way it looks, I would say it should do it this year, and that's incredible. All these oh look at this. Remember uh, um, Oracle, all the ones from 2000. Look at this. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Back in 2000, it hits a high of, it's an IPO, and then it hits a high of 46, 47. I think it was split. Then it eh, drops a little bit. It drops down to uh, $7. <clears throat> and then it rallies, and it's just in a steady buy mode, up and up and up. And now it's trading at an all-time high today, 58.85. Oracle, all those oldies, uh, Microsoft, look at this. <clears throat> All the oldies. Microsoft 5397 back in 2000 drops to 14 in 2009. Uh, it's had a little bit of a rally. It's at 137, almost an all time high as we speak. Wow, this is really interesting. Uh, yeah, Microsoft is a beast. I had a question about DDD. This is 3D uh, technology. So yesterday, I am doing what I said I'd do yesterday. I just run through a bunch of stocks, as they mentioned. So DDD is 3D systems. We once had a really nice trade on this. And I've kind of stepped away. I'll tell you why. Look at this weekly chart. Look at these big, ugly red candles. Look how many there are. Plummets down in, in 2018. Plummets down in 2019. 2000 and uh, May of this year, another big move, uh, $13 uh, $13 down to $7.96. Now it's trying to come back. This is the move that should say, just like that A pattern that we were looking at moments ago in whatever it was that we were looking at. What was I looking at? Uh, can I find it at all? Uh, this Merck. I can't remember what I was looking at. 
Uh, what stock was I looking at? Wasn't Snap? But it made that uppercase A, the Eiffel Tower. Here it is, the same thing. Goes to a lower low, and now it's trading above that. So at 8.99, I think DDD is in play. But just be careful that bad news stuff comes out so suddenly. S S Y S or is it S Y S S? Uh, Stratus Systems. SSYS stress systems also made the peak D. That made a peak C. This has made a peak D and pulling back, hit the 200 period moving average. This is now a better looking chart. There were times when DDD was a better looking chart. There were times when SSSY was. I was in Israel a couple of years ago and speaking to someone, and it turns out that uh, her daughter works for Stratus, and her daughter was there. We were just at uh, kind of my wife's family's uh, meeting. And um, Turns out that she worked for Stratus, and they'd just been taken over by an American company. Now, I can't remember what the American company was. And we had a fabulous trade on either Stratus at the time or just afterwards as a demonstration after I had a webinar on this, on, on, on techniques. And, and then I've just left it alone. But look at it. This is nice action going from the 17s to the 28s. This is a better-looking chart. So I would say SSYS is a better-looking chart. You asked me about DDD. I think it is going to go higher, but um, just be careful. It's got look at this. Even the, even lately, these big red candles. Yeah, this is a tough one. Only in that I don't like this bad news kind of sneaking in when you least expect it. Everything's looking great. Look at the MACD doing so well. Then boom, intraday you can go from the 920 area to 840. That's a huge percentage intraday. So I'm just saying yes, it's going. I think it's going to go to a leg D above. Uh, 9.38 is trading at 8.99, so it's 40 cents ish. Um, but you could easily see a 40 cent decline with this kind of thing. So just be careful, that's all I'm saying. Now, I just want to go back to this the e mini. Remember, I said uh, this is going to be a leg G slash C right here, but we had already got um, a peak, a potential peak F in the five minute chart and a D in the 10 minute chart. So we'll see for the next 10 minutes. There's just a kind of a digestion of these, the terrific gain. It's 133 up in the Dow, 18 points up in the SP. So I think a chunk of the work has been done intraday. Certainly, it's exactly what we were looking for. We wanted to see, and we got. Let's see what happens now. Friday, um, a couple of quick things before we uh, take a break. I said I'd look at some, look beyond B Y N D. We always expected a peak D. In beyond B Y N D, that's beyond meat. I see it more and more in the supermarkets now. Well, this went to a D, then it went to an E, and then it went to an F at 201.88 on the 18th of June. It's trading at 151. I mean, these are unbelievable numbers. This is a stock that was trading in the 70s just uh, two months ago when it came out as an IPO. So, yes, this is good, but it's only a leg B. I think this is in play, and I think for subscribers, I hope that we're going to have a chance to just trade it. That's all. I don't want to hold this. Just trade it for quick bounces and they're big bounces. Something like we did once upon a time when, uh, what was it that came out as an IPO? Uh, MWV, VM, oh, VMware, VMW. Uh, VMware, we had 100 and something points on the upside, then 100 points on the downside we got, just trading it in the bull market as an IPO and then coming back down again. I haven't been in for ages. Um, this is con con digesting its gain, just like the S&P now. The E-mini two-minute made that G slash C, so this did, and it had a really big pullback from just over 200, trading at 169 right now. VMware, cloud virtualization, I, I think this is in play, but at this particular point, the whole, the whole crew, uh, CRM, which is salesforce.com, also just taking a bit of a breather after this spectacular move. You've got to expect it with some of these stocks when they have such a fantastic uh, move. Um, yeah, did I just type that into the den by mistake, SSYS, and not into the den, into my producer? Sorry. Um, okay, now, a couple of things, because we're going to take a break, and then we just have a short little interlude, because the market wraps up in about... Uh, 10 minutes. So in that time, I wanted to do a couple of things. I wanted to show you that you can go, you can just do any technique you want. I just did A, we did Agilent. Uh, B is for, whoop, where did it go? Bonds Group. Bonds Group, just sideways trading band. This is a more industrial. This is more, uh, this is, um, Bonds Group is more part of the infrastructure 
Uh, C is uh, Citibank, Citigroup. Um, nice move to the upside. The banks have done really well. This is an A, B, C. This is a P, D with a doji candle. So it's, it's getting a little toppy. And the weekly chart is good. And it's broken out in the monthly chart of its major resistance line. D is for Dominion. Dominion has had a fabulous move up. I'll be back. We'll just run some letters and, and I'll, I'll get ready for the weekend. We'll be back on Friday. Friday, I'm going to have a. I want to look at monthly charts Friday. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. I, I had a question about PLD. Remember, this is the one where the day after that we actually bought it for subscribers uh, at 75. Um, I did it on air. I said, I just, there's no way that you can know because I was about to do a webinar what I do and how I do it. Let's just do this live. I'll show you exactly what it is now that it's moved up. It, it wouldn't be fair if I did it the day of. I gave it to subscribers. This was after I gave it and it moved up. It went to 82.82. This is Prologis um, Inc. Reed, a REIT, industrial REIT. Uh, and right in the perfect area right now, and now it's making that V-shaped pattern. We just had an F slash C, just as I had a G slash C in the two-minute chart. Look, G slash C went to the D. Now it's probably going to pull back. It's probably made the high for the day as it takes a little breather by the close. And here we, we've got to go to 82.83. The high today is 82.54. It's got about another, what, uh, 19 cents to go. Uh, we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, what are 29 cents to go? What I am looking at here is 
that this is held and it's held above the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So that's what we, we're long. We've been long Bank of America for quite a while from the 24s at various stages. Uh, it went recently to the 29s, trading right now, 29. Uh, we, we're along the DBA. The DBA is the uh, agricultural ETF. We're long from the 15s and 16.68 right now. This, is, this looks at wheat, uh, uh, corn, uh, soybeans. Done very nicely. Uh, what else uh, should I mention here? Um, IAI, we, we're back at 60, we, we're, we're long, and now it's at 64.36. This is the iShares broker dealer. This is the only way that you can know how I'm doing. I'm doing it live right now to show you the patterns. He has the cup pattern. It looks like a smiley and a growny face. Uh, but it turned around, made a cup formation. It's looking very good. And so that's what that's what I do for my subscribers. Some opening calls. These are some of the, the positions we have. And uh, there's another one. Uh, should I mention or not? Uh, no, I'm going to leave that out for the moment. So, um, yes, we're looking. Oh, and the dollar. Remember the dollar? We've been long since... Um, April of 2018 at 90. It went to 98.37. It's trading right now 96.37. So, yeah, short term, long term, doesn't matter. And not everything works, but we do our absolute best. Hey, have a wonderful fourth, everyone. Stay tuned for Steve. Stay tuned for Dave. Stay tuned for. for oh, we're all, all done. We're done. I think this is it for the programming. Have a wonderful weekend, and otherwise, I'll see you Friday.